the size of Netherlands if Israel what you call a refugee camp Netherlands with all the bad weather because I call this winter and everything snow and everything call it the bad weather Everybody was, uh, everybody was almost uh, without Netherlands. The agricultural export last year, if Borno State can do 1% of that, 1%. If you use the rate of exchange today, about 600 budget of Borno State. But because, so this time, I'm going to tell the people there, like me. The issue of transfer voting, I've said it, and I want to see how to do the right thing. If I win, that's time. 2023, either way the election goes, is a In fact, their vote is far more important than those who are inside. Because like I said, you are a double victim. So you must vote first. It is critical, it's important. If Kenya can, diaspora can vote, what is wrong with Nigeria? Every other country, every other small country, do that. So why will our own be different? Somebody asked about the issue of education. The greatest investment any nation, any country can do, the greatest investment any nation can do is education. The more educated you are, the better your development than your economy. When I was governor, everybody comes to you and says, hey, look at the capital worker. Look at this. Peter, do you know you can do this? Peter, even the way you, the way place you live, your office, it doesn't look like governor's mansion. Let me assure you, I've said it before, Let's leave issue of election. I'll assure you that uh, what we are doing, the movement we are doing today, those who are in charge of election in Nigeria will have no alternative than to do the right thing. When I ran for governor, when I ran for governor in Anambra State, it was like this. But eventually, they found out that they had no alternative. And I assure you, this will happen. On the issue of ports and customs, somebody asked. I have visited about six countries. Today, Nigerian Post Authority, which is supposed to be one of our revenue, great revenue generating agencies, is not doing or contributing up to 50% of what is expected from them. And also, issues we talk about customs. Customs live in the same society as political leaders live. As long as the political leaders behave, live as corrupt as they are today, it will be difficult for other agencies to function. Very, very difficult. 
I'll answer that more when I talk about corruption because they all same. Somebody talk about prophet Nigeria need to pursue now aggressively is security. Let nobody tell you it is difficult to fight security in Nigeria. Criminals cannot be criminals cannot overrun a country. It's not possible. And I give you an example of what we in South America, all over South America, from Brazil to Mexico to Colombia, I want to give places that are near to you. They've gone through what we are going through today. They've been through it. One is that something you call natural security. The more you pull people out of poverty, the more you reduce criminality. Then, you have to pull and government supporting people to come out of poverty is not as difficult as we make it look. It isn't done everywhere in the world. Even the amount that is being mismanaged and stolen can do that. In terms of issue of facing the remaining, Nigeria is, in terms of all our security agencies, the number of personnel is low, they are unequipped for the job. I was in Egypt. Egypt is a country of 100 million and they have over a million police. Nigeria is 200 million and we have 320,000 police. <laughs> and I can tell you, I don't know whether any of you listen to the governor of, uh, governor of Castina. He says that the number of police in Castina is 5,000 the whole of Castina. And that you go to a station, you see 30, and they have only 10 guns. So even out of the, even out of the 320, one is that out of the 320, about 70,000 are following people around. We shouldn't be, including myself. Then the remaining 250, you now use the same ratio you use. You find out that only about 80,000 are armed. It won't work. We need to increase the number and we need to immediately start state police. There's no reason there's no reason why we should not have community policing. We want to secure the place. So what is the fear of not having police all over the place? We need multi-level policing. That's what happens in every society. So it is not it's, so professional. Be rest assured I can tell you we can't talk about, we don't want you to come home. Professional, I don't want you to come home. We don't want the foreign investor to come or anybody. Everybody coming home or anybody coming to invest, even if the profit is 200%, you have to be alive to enjoy your profit. You're not going to die, no? So, we must secure the place. It is number one item. And I assure you, I've been through it before. This one will not be different. Issue of Abasha loot and corruption. Let me tell you about uh, me and um, 
looking at the past. The things that say people don't like. If I'm serving today, if you say Peter will be is the president tomorrow, don't think I'm going to spend my time looking at the back. Let me finish. Let me finish. I didn't say people at the back. Nothing will happen to them. It's not my business. Those who are doing it can do it. But let me tell you, those who think about yesterday and today will miss tomorrow. God gave us eye for the front. Nigeria is too huge with too much talent to deal with the future. I've served as a governor. Anybody who tell you there's, co there's corruption, anywhere you see corruption, those in leadership are involved. If you, the leader, is not stealing, your family, your wife and children are not involved. Those around you are not involved. You reduce it by 70%. <laughs> and I've challenged everybody. And I've challenged everybody and I'm challenging you. Go to Anambra State for the eight years I was governor and show me what is missing there. Because the way it works is that you add your own. When you put your own, the commissioners or the ministers will put their own. The permanent secretary will put their own. Everybody will continue to put their own. So when it comes back to you to approve, you can't say no because your own is there. <laughs> if your own, if your own is not there, it's impossible. It couldn't have been possible for an Umbra state in eight years we did not borrow money. We didn't borrow money from anybody. We paid whoever we were owing. And I say it and all of you, it is in banks in Nigeria, you have contacts in all those banks, it would have been possible for me to leave office leaving 150 something million dollars and over 30 billion naira. You know, there are monies nobody said that nobody said I should keep them. So if you're not stealing, and that goes with what I'm saying about cutting the cost of governance. The cost of governance in Nigeria is totally unacceptable. It is not possible. There's no way. If you wake up tomorrow morning and anybody sees the Prime Minister of Canada in 30 something vehicles on the road, I don't think he will remain the next day. Will he? That is the crisis we face. I don't think anybody has seen the wife in convoy. No, it's important you know this. This is the crisis we face. I face it as a governor and these are the waste we want to curtail. When I was governor, I faced the fact that the people say, oh, you're the only governor without office of first lady. I'm very close to my wife. Two of us live in the house and everything... But throughout the campaign, just like I'm going now, she never campaigned. Nobody voted for her. And suddenly, she appears from nowhere and be cut out for government. These are the confusions we need to remove. You know that. Issue of National Assembly. You're talking about National Assembly. Let me tell you. National Assembly is not a problem. I governed the Anambra State without having one member of House of Assembly from my party. 
initially it was a difficult one. When they realized where I was going, everybody, the society took over. I can assure you, National Assembly will not be a problem. When I put what I'm going to do for the people of Nigeria on the table, they will have no alternative than to follow it or Nigeria should... Uh, Let's deal with the next five. All right. Thank you, Excellency. This question is from Yoyo Common Sense Sister. What is your plan, policy for gender equality? Women having access to credit, more opportunities in political offices, and educating the girl child in Nigeria and its impact on the economy. This is from Buki Ojo. What will it take you to do restructuring, tribal segregation, and religion? This is from Igbo Union of Canada. How can you solve the problem of power sector differently from previous government? What? How can you solve the problem of power sector differently? Power. Yes, power, power sector, yeah. The power sector differently from previous government. This is from Cynthia Okudili, Okudili from POSN. With a such with this with the surge in migration of healthcare professionals, how do you plan to create sustainability and reverse this trend? This is from Benjamin Orokeke Junit from POSN as well. With the landing, with the with the loading rate at this is not clear. <laughs> Please, your handwriting is not visible. I'll take the last one from here, Your Excellency. This is from Doctor Dave Wabo. How will you solve the how will you solve recurring ASU strike issue when elected as president of Nigeria? Okay. Well let's we we'll start with gender equality. It will uh, surprise you that the uh, um I will, I will say what I'll do and I'll give you an example of where it's happened before. One of the greatest assets we've not utilized is investing in women. If you invest, man, I'm telling you, this is very serious. If you invest in women, I assure you, you're going to get better return than if you invest in men. Because why? Women will always care with whatever they make. Of course, I don't need to tell you about my own success as governor. I can tell you, before I became governor, I was chairing one of the, be one of the successful banks in Nigeria. My people I work with are here. A treasurer was a woman. A risk officer was a woman. And I'm the chairman. These two persons 
will always will always always tell me when I'm wrong because as a leader the greatest thing you need one is that as a leader learning and leading is inseparable as a leader you don't know everything if you see anybody that knows everything he's an idiot don't go near him So you must listen. As governor, I can tell you it was more visible. Everybody that knows me know that as governor, my chief of staff was a woman. The pansec in my office, woman, head of service, woman, Mr. of Commissioner for Finance, Commissioner for Education. In fact, it's just not um, any of you who have known me closely or watched what I did will tell you that it wouldn't have been possible without people like Mrs. Wandu, Stella Okuna, and this. You can't say anything wrong in where my chief of staff is. Never. She will not allow it to go. She will tell you, no, no, no. You can't do this. And all women. Until today, that's how they are. In fact, my every now and then, everybody knows they're coming to a meeting and say, it's time to suck all of you. They are ready to go. So it is important when we talk about Gender equality, we should actually invest in women and give them the responsibility. I think that even the Nigeria have had enough of men. Now we probably need a woman to solve the problem. Single handedly, Ngozi Wala was begging and crying to all of us as governors. To what we are going today, she saw it coming. She was crying. Go and read her book. Fighting corruption is dangerous. She was begging us when we had over 20 billion naira in sovereign wealth fund, in, a, in a SS crude account. He said, allow me to save this money and I'll be able to build up the 50, 50 billion in that account and we have reserve of 50 billion the country will be stabilized. The governors refused. All of us refused. All of us. But I must say, the book is very clear. Page 61, it was very clear. It said, Governor B, who supported saving, was not supported by his colleagues. Every country... Every country in the world saves. Every human being saves for the future. Except Nigeria. <laughs> Issue of restructuring. Well, somebody asked about restructuring. I just talked about state police. One of the greatest and the most important things about structuring is security. I believe in it. We must lay the foundation that is proper for our enduring federal system of government. And that is restructuring the country to make it more competitive. Federal government has nothing to do with the education. It's waste of everybody's time. All these have cut off points, have this and this. No, 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 no. You're wasting everybody's time. If these people want to go to school, they go to school. If these people don't want to go to school, it's their business. We must deal with all those issues and make the country more competitive. Power sector. Let me tell you power sector is one place that I look at and I tell you there's something wrong with Nigeria. 
Nigeria generates and distributes about 4,000 megawatts of electricity. 